Boarding School. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hi. Nice to have uh, our visitors here. Um, so my name is Trompi van der Berg from Trompi van der Berg Photography. Um, I'll be hosting tonight. Um, we're just going to quickly go around the room and introduce who we're going to have with us. Uh, Luat Gossen, man that needs no introduction. Say hello, Luat. Oh, hello. <laughs> and then we have Carla Niemand. Hi. <laughs> And then Peter and Monique Bosman with their professional setup. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, guys, so yes, tonight we're going to have a, a nice uh, informal uh, roundtable session where we're going to talk about reception lighting, something that I know a lot of wedding photographers struggle with, especially when it comes to uh, thatch roofs and high ceilings and all those type of things. And then as a second part of the discussion, we're also going to talk about uh, night portraits. So those nice night portraits that we do at the end of the session um, that should make part of your package and your portfolio. Um, so, yes, let's kick it off. Um, I do uh, want you guys watching to please post your questions. We'll try and answer them. Um, so please feel free to engage, guys. We want this nice and informal. Uh, so we can all learn from each other and enjoy it. Um, so let's start with the Bosmans. So, guys, when um, you walk into a reception hall, what is your thought process? What do you look for first when you walk in there? What do you look at? And what is your go-to setup um, for a few scenarios? <laughs> so we try and keep it as minimalistic as possible so that we're not um, too much in the way. Um, the first thing that we look at is where's the ceiling and where if there's any draping that we can possibly bounce off from. So our go-to setup is probably at most two eighty-two hundreds on a light stand with a bracket, um, bouncing off anything that could possibly give me as much light. Uh, from if you can, I've got a um, picture that you can use as an example. Um, then I can take you guys through it. Did you see it? Your screen is up. Okay. Can you see it? No, uh, there we go. Yes. Okay, perfect. So the first thing I look at when I walk into a a venue for this, for example, this. Um, I've got beautiful draping coming from the ceiling over here. So the first thing I look at is where's the most, where's the spot that I'm not going to be in the way of anybody, anywhere. I'm not going to chop over anything. I'm not going to be in anybody's way. Um, and as you can see, oops, let me scroll back up. As you can see over there, I've got 180, 200 bouncing off on this side and 180, 200 bouncing off on that side. And it basically gives me enough light to focus on the couple that's in the middle over there the MC that's over here and the speaker and then I can basically just rotate that head over there to either bounce backwards to photograph any reactions on this side or on this side or majority just bouncing off straight this way so that I can get a beautiful um, full on all the guests on either side um, of the venue. So that's the first thing that comes to mind um, when I walk into a venue is where's the spot that I what's what's the best spot that I could use um, to bounce my my flash off from the second thing is of course everybody dreads it it's the jaded high ceiling <laughs> if you have a high ceiling what the what the venue usually does is that they have beautiful draping at least hanging lower um, and then as you can see over here um, there's usually like a little Sliver. sliver of draping that you can possibly bounce off from and that's what we use we try and see where is the spot that we can use that we can possibly bounce off from is it a wall is it a sliver of um draping that we could possibly use and if it's not anything then we use backlight then we backlight everything um and then we just use a either led to fall from the front 
or um, we use something that would, we can actually reflect off from um, so that the thought process when we walk into a venue off okay. the back. And so we've I'm never, gonna... if I've never been there, then we, of course, check the place out from the get-go. Okay. Just bring that uh, just bring that slide up again, please. No. Sure. So don't don't yeah, don't close it. I'll I'll close it my side. I just want to ask you a question about that while we're on it. Okay. Um let me just open it up again. I think I closed it. We've got a lot of fans here for uh Technique Studio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm just having some trouble opening it up. What is it? While we wait for that, Luat, uh, same question. What is what is your thought process when you when you walk in? Well, it's, it's pretty much the same as, um, you know, uh, deciding what type of shot you want to do when you do the couple photos. You know, you want to decide if you want to use hard light, um, if you want to use soft light, you know, more or less what you want your shots to look like. And based on that, then I will walk around the venue and I would um, uh, also look for a space where your lights is going to be out of the way. You know, of course, there's a lot of guests uh, running around and hello, hello. Near Papa Fabio's up. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, uh, as a party progresses, there's always guests that have a little bit too much to drink and so on. And obviously, you don't want um, people to knock over your lights and stuff like that. So, the corners generally works well for me. Um, I've got a, I've got more or less a system that I, that I normally use, uh, depending on the type of venue and so on. But um, I would use three lights um, and use like a triangular type of shape. So it doesn't matter where you're standing. Uh, the, the point of focus is uh, if you're standing in the middle of it, there will be light coming from, you know, from uh, from different sides. So the triangular setup kind of works well for me. I have used four lights in the past, you know, where you kind of just stick them in the corners and so on. But then um, afterward, <laughs> when you busy editing, it looks like you're watching a rugby game. <laughs> the shadows are just all over the place. So um, I think the most important thing for me, I, I don't really mind about the, the ceiling being too high or being thatch roof and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, the thing that matters most to me is, do I want to use hard light or, or would I rather go kind of uh, with a softer approach and so on? You know? So um, depends what you want out of your shot. Okay. Carla, and you? Um, I would say I'm quite a mixture between Monique and Lewitt. So I also just look at my reception Obviously, with a lot of receptions having either thatch roof or like high ceilings, I usually just look for a wall to bounce off of. So I shoot with the TT685. I only shoot with these two. And I use a two light setup. So I'll put one on the left side and one on the right side. Sometimes when you do have thatch roofs, I usually just pull up my little bounce cart tilt my light a little bit and then it bounces light evenly all over your subjects um so that's usually how i work it um and then obviously if there's a little bit of draping in the reception area that helps me a lot usually i would chat to my clients before the wedding and i will advise them on decor so i usually tell them a lot of candles help if your venue is very dark um, you don't have to go all out, but you can. And fairy lights also add a little bit more to your venue. So I think ambient light also adds to my photos. But I, I, you probably shoot with a shallow depth of field as well and with fast lenses. Yes. So I shoot. So you get with, away with the, with the speed lights. Yes. I shoot with one lens only. It's the 1655 from Fuji. And it's a, it's a nice all-rounder lens. So you don't have to change lenses that often at a wedding. Um, you can shoot your portraits. You can shoot your couple session with it, as well as your reception, because it's got a nice if up to it. OK. OK, so guys, from my side, um, when, I look at, when I walk into a venue, the first thing I, I look at is where everyone's positioned. So where's the groom table? 
Yeah, I hate it when the, the, the guy that makes a speech is, is at this uh, opposite side of the room. You know, that's always a problem. I hate that. Um, but my, my go to set up, guys, is I keep it simple. So for me, uh, reception photography is documentary photography. So I'm not looking to, to shoot something that's going to blow, go into a magazine and blow everyone away. For me, the way I handle it, it is simply documentary photography. So if I can get a good exposure, uh, good um, focus on my clients, and I can just focus on the moments and capturing that. That is my philosophy for that type of lighting. And uh, in terms of, 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 of lighting, I use the 8600. So what I do is, guys, I go and plonk my 8600 in the middle of the dance floor. Um, and I bounce it. So it, 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 it shoots up. And uh, I'm on TTL, and I just walk around, and I just fill that whole place of light. Um, <laughs> I, I do kill all of the ambient, but again, my, my style of photography is documentary. Okay. Um, which, when I'm on TTL, I can basically walk around and shoot any of, uh, direction, and I can get a good exposure. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, the flat roof, um, when I'm shooting flat roof, I do direct light. So I'll, I'll put the biggest umbrella I have, and I'll just throw it in the general direction of wherever I'm shooting into. Um, again, you're never going to get great uh, photos under a fetch roof. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thought process. Um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Um, so this is just a, a, some of the images. So this is what I'm looking for, guys. I'm looking for good exposures. I'm looking for... Oh, now I'm, now I'm messing around here. Hang on. Let me just go back. So with the light being stationed in the middle of the dance floor, uh, it allows me to just do my thing. Where is it gone now? Sorry. Technical difficulties. Where is it now? Sorry, guys. I see the smug mug. Yeah, I operate on smug mug. What is going to something? Um, Sorry. What, can I ask something? Yes. Um, if you if you're only using the 8600 uh, during the reception time and so on, what type of light shaper would you would you put on? <laughs> so what I'd normally do is I'd put on my biggest softbox, and I'll just bounce that into the light because that creates nice soft light, and it fills the entire place. Um, if there's if the ceiling's too low, I just use a bare flash. I just use it as it is. Uh, I leave the little reflected dish on, and I just yes. bounce. And then, mm. uh, like I say, for fetch roof, it's 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 just point and shoot. It's horrible, okay. like, I hate it, but it, it, it gives me a good exposure. <laughs> so um, I think then, guys, what is the um, in terms of? Uh, I know with shooting under fetch roof, um, color cost is a problem. What do you guys do for that? And you get a horrible yellow, yellow color. So I I change my white balance in camera. So I'll set it a little bit more cooler. Um, and then obviously in post, I'll drag down more of the oranges and more of the yellows. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the same with us as well. I think with the all round, um, with our editing and our shooting style, I shoot everything a little bit more cooler and then um, I warm it up in post a little bit more. But of course, we try and get everything as perfect as possible. Uh, but with the thatch roof, it's just impossible because that cost that comes down is an orange, yellow, terrible cost. Um, so then I'll just also dial down on my orange, just dial down on my yellows. Um, and that's, of course, if you guys use the calibration sliders, that's where that thing just pops and just it just blows your mind. Um, so that's where I will tweak it a little bit more. Um, but I mean, with something like that, uh, there's, there's a color cost coming from the floor because the floor most likely is wooden floors as well. So there's a yellow bouncing yeah. up against the chin, mm. there's yellow coming down on both sides of the face. So yeah, I think um, I think we should do something about that roofs, guys. I think we should go to the venues. <laughs> I think we should just, if any, anybody in this round table, if you guys win the lotto, I think we should go to all to all the sex rooms and just ask them nicely, please. Let's just drape them all white. <laughs> what I want to do is, guys, uh, I normally win. Sometimes the yellow is just so bad that it doesn't look that great. So 
I sometimes as well give the clients a black and white in of the same image because making it black and white sometimes uh so whatever I give them in color, I also give them in black and white if it was really, really, really bad. Because uh yeah, it's just, uh, when you as soon as you make it black and white, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> we call it art, okay? We call it art. Listen, as the Bosman's contacted all your um uh uh fans because <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for everyone that was on the line. Thanks, guys. You guys are making me shine. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any one of you guys that use speed lights for, for receptions anymore? I know, Carla, you said you do now. Yes, I use You guys use speed it on light. camera at, at all, or is that just not? I I don't shoot speed lights on camera at all because I don't get a nice equal balance of light. So I'd rather just pop my flashes onto a stand, have a two light setup, and I can move them around as I want, and it spreads out equal light. Yeah. Good. I, I still sometimes, uh, depending on the venue, I mean, there's um, with the venues that we shoot most of the time, it's, it's smaller venues and so on. And um, uh, then I will pop up the, the, the flash on camera, but I have my two ADs, you know, so I'll use the, uh, the flash on my camera to, tri to trigger the, the two AD 200s. Oh. Um, but I always try to kind of keep my triangle going, you know, so yeah. set up the lights on the side. And then if you have to turn, let's say, um, it's actually quite useful because um, the, the whole room is, is never going to be evenly lit. So let's yeah. say um, the couple is sitting in the front and we've set up the uh, the two uh, the two ADs to kind of give give a good exposure on the main table if you want to do like you know family photos or you know speeches or whatever and then the couple jumps up and they want to go and do the cutting of the cake you know but it's stuck there in the corner then uh, <laughs> it's a better permission for me to kind of move the lights around quickly and then have everybody wait for me so it's a lot easier for me to have the the flash on camera and then kind of use that little bit of bounce light that's uh, or the, the the fall of light from the two ADs and just use my um, uh, on camera flash just for that for that nice soft uh, flat green flow light. So Lua, do you use your speed light to trigger the other lights with? Yes, I do. I so do. how is the consistency with that? Because that is that is something that I sometimes struggle with, and that's why I prefer the the triggers because. Yeah, look, I also prefer the triggers and so on. But uh, what what works well for me is I kind of calculate the distance um, between myself and the subject. Let's say I'm shooting with a 1655 lens. Um, you wide open on 2.8, then uh, I would take a couple of test shots just to see, let's say on 1 over 16 or 1 over 32 or something like that. And then I'll just keep my my, my distance from the couple, I'll, I'll keep that consistent and then kind of use the, the zoom of the, of, of the lens uh, if you want to get a little bit closer, a little bit further away. It works well, but it's, you know, it's still a little bit challenging because you still need to find that time just to get that you know, just to calculate the distance that that, more, that you're going to be using more or less during the, the course of the night. And then um, if that works well, then I, you know, I just leave it on and kind okay. of run the rest of the, uh, the reception uh, like that. So just kind of keep the distance in mind while you do so. Okay. I have a question uh, there for you, um, Lord, just to add. So since you're calculating everything, what do you, how do you find the recycling time on all those flashes? Because triggering it from a flash to other flashes, do you find that the recycling time is less um, than it is with a little trigger? Um, or do you do you not see any difference in a trigger and, and it being firing with the flash? No, it's, it's, it, for me, it's pretty much the same. You know, um, what I do forget sometimes is after the couple shoot to <laughs> switch the camera back to, uh, to switch it off from high speed sync, you know? <laughs> so, then uh, oh. as soon as I start getting misfires, then I realized, listen, I've forgotten to take it off my speed <laughs> seat. <laughs> Hopefully that's not during the entrance. Say so again? Hopefully that's not during the entrance. <laughs> Hopefully not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, had, we've had instances in the past where uh, the couple actually walked in a little bit too quick because um, normally they'll uh, you know, go to the bathroom and just go wash their faces and hands after the couple shoot and so on. And this one time it didn't happen, you know, and uh, I was still busy setting up, not setting up the lights, I still had to turn them on. And as I looked at the door, the couple was making their way in, you know, so I just, I, 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 <laughs> and, we, and we started shooting. So, um, that happened to us too before. Yeah. <laughs> How high was your exposure slider slid on, on Lightroom? 
Ja, de nooit reduction. Nou, dat is cycle time en all, and all of that is more or less the same. Um, I still prefer the trigger. It's um, especially with the Fuji system, you know, with uh, with Canon and and uh, you know all the, the the other brands and so on. The camera has got a nice grip, you know, so it, it feels balanced with the flash and all that. But with the smaller cameras, it's uncomfortable, you know. You walk around with this massive flash on this small little body thingy, but um, it, it works well, you know, especially if. Um, Look, if you if you speak to your couple, you can kind of get an idea of what's going to happen during the uh, during the day. And um, if you have a, 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 a what's it a, a program for the day as well, then you know the cutting of the cake is going to happen at some point. So then it kind of it makes sense for me to kind of you know just put the put the flash on, use the flash to trigger all the other lights that's been set up, and then um, you know just continue through the recession um, like that. Yeah. Um, it's a very good point that you made there because I think like um, having that program and also just educating the clients and how to uh, and what should happen when um, it's most likely for their benefit as well. But just for you to know, okay, I need this amount of time to have my life change or go from here to there. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I think I think a good point for that as well is to to stay in contact and keep eye contact with what's happening with the DJ because normally. Stuff revolves around him, you know. Yes. When someone's gonna have a speech, or it's a first dance, or it's gonna be the flowers, you know. Yes. So I always make sure that I I stay because it's happened before where you know the lights go off and then it's first time, <laughs> dance time, and you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, would say, I would say especially for for low light and reception work, it's important to stay on top of the timeline, like Bert said, and. Know what's coming next so you can be prepared. Yeah. 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 Got a little question there for you. Um, so I use the 16 to 55 from Fujinon. So if you compare it to a Canon, it's the 24 to 70 lens. Brilliant. Um, and then, um, guys, let's talk about, uh, because I know that's a big thing for, for uh, reception work as well, is, is ISOs. I know a lot of photographers starting out, they 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 get taught that ISO is from the devil, uh, <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> so, um, just from my side, ISO, guys, um, I would, will very happily shoot at 4,000 and up. The reason for that is because you're, you speak, put less strain on your lights, they recycle quicker, yes. so, and they also use less power. Um, so, yeah. Where recycle times are, 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 are at a premium, especially when you're shooting thatch roof, I pump the ISO. Yeah. And I, call, I, I know when I make it uh, black and white, it's artistic. <laughs> it's artistic. <laughs> and we also, um, we Sony shooters, so I mean, 4000 still looks beautiful on a Sony. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, again, when we're talking about the reception, um and the fact that we use two 80s and peter usually uses just to get back on you um now when i'm at monique's second shooter when i'm not doing video okay. then i'll just use the v1 yeah so when peter is using the v1 um it's really awesome little look at the so um, you don't share your lights uh monique no 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 no, no, no. it's very <laughs> selfish it's very selfish <laughs> <laughs> no then my recycle time goes down and then no. <laughs> um, and then his shares oh. also go down. Excuse me? And then his shares also go down. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you can the, the view one. <laughs> what was I on? I totally lost track of it. Anyway, ISO. So we yeah. Sony shooters. And um anywhere from I'll pop my ISO if I really have to um up to about thousand um indoors and then outdoors I'll, I'll crank it up really high um indoors just for the recycle time of my flashes because i have um, two of them running at the same time and i usually pop them around 16th of a power eighth of a power around there just to not strain them too much um also depending on the size of the venue but if you go back to that picture that I, re I referred to earlier on, that's quite a quite a big venue. Um, I think they seat up to 500 uh, guests. But in that photo, there was about 180, 200 guests. Um, so for something like that, I think we 
to around 1,000 ISO, 800 ISO. Um, but Peter, on his side, he will probably crank it up quite high. Yeah. Um, you'll throw it on a TTL, and I think you probably go around 640, 800 around there as well. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, the party photos, guys. Is there anything specific you do there? I see when, when Nick's already driving there. What do you do? Yeah, when, when he gets excited, when it's that time. Get excited. <laughs> And I usually wait for like, you know, I'm supposed to leave at nine o'clock, but you know why? I'm going to probably be given because, you know, a few drinks are going to be flowing. Everybody's got liquid courage and I want some break dances to happen. So I'm definitely going to stay until then. And, um, and yeah, so creative wise, in of course, all photographers love it. Um, I then swap with Peter. Can you believe it? I then go use Then you go to the speed light. Then I use the V one. <laughs> then, then, then I then I use the uh, LEDs. Yeah, then Peter goes LED. Um, so this is our new favorite little tool. I don't know if you guys. Know oh, it. it's beautiful. I, I've been yeah. wanting one of those. That's great. Yeah. What's so the power thing. like on that, Peter? Is it usable? It's awesome. I use it for video as well, like just to like pop it on someone, or even like. If I want to focus on uh, on the MC during the speeches or something, I'll pop it on the MC and it's like on a monopod. So I'm not taking okay. up a lot of space and it gives me just enough light that I'm not overpowering it, overpower, so it's not overexposed as well. And I don't have to pop my ISO to crazy levels. Okay, we've yeah. got to do a bit of uh, brand punting here. So just give us the, 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 the name of that thing. <laughs> so this uh, um, the Godox M1. Oh shit! Is it on? Sorry. Um, this is the Godox M1. This little McGaffey is definitely something to invest in if you ever want to go and be a little bit more creative with um, your photography work. Um, Tom, if you don't mind sharing the screen, I can oh. show you a few photos. Can you see my screen? It's up, yes. Okay. So, for example, something like this, um, these are two shots directly after each other, but because the M1 was on a party feature, or I'm not too sure what, the, what which feature, what it's called, oh, false, pulsating light or something, it pops out different colors of light every three to five seconds, and it rotates the colors. So it allows you to get really creative with your work, and of course, um, with something like this, I'm going to stop sharing the screen over here, um, Chompi. Okay. okay. Um, so it allows you to be creative. So what we then do is we have this little setup. Of course, this is also from Godox. Um, this is the, because the M1 is, of course, magnetic in front. Um, we've got a three-piece setup. So that's the grid. This is the CTO gel, or CTO, and then some diffusion as well. And then this just popped in front like that, and you're good to go. And I literally... And it's, all it's all magnetic. Yeah, so this is all magnetic. Great. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just pop that on like that. And then this is literally firing directly at the subject. Um, I have it at a very um, low shutter, so my shutter is probably something around 1.2 second, seconds. Just explain that for our viewers, uh, why the slow shutter? Oh, so the slow shutter is to um, play around with the light a little bit more. Um, so it allows you, to, if you go back to that other, um, you can share my screen again and I can. So it allows you to create these um, light streaks in the background. So these are lights that you can see, the orange lights are all from either fairy lights or maybe a candle on the table, but it allows you to slow down um, whatever is happening, yet the flash that comes from, the light that comes from flash that's directly at you freezes everything for that 1.3 seconds. And then like, it, freezes the subject. it freezes the subject, yeah. And then, of course, it allows you to capture everything as it happens because your flash is directly at the subject um so for that 1.3 seconds everything is dead still and i physically move my camera so i'm going to stop sharing my screen hang on hang um, on stop, stop, bring it up again 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. Just go back to your. Uh, there was one with the shoe game. Just bring up that image quickly. I just want to check something. There was a shoe game one I saw. Classic shoe game. The classic, the one. The classic the one. shoe game that. When is that time of the evening? <laughs> Here we go. What? Uh, I just wanted to know what light did you use for the the primary light on them because it's beautiful soft light that. That was it's actually. Really the DJ actually had a smoke um, machine, and if you see at the back, it's a beautiful, it's like yes. a haze. Almost. So we just use that and we pop the AD200 at the back facing the client, and then in the front, there was a white wall, and we bounced another AD, AD200 uh, to flash some light on the client. So okay. nice soft light. Thank you. Right, uh, yeah. not from the yeah. uh, <laughs> I want to ask one thing. Sorry, Monique, um, that other photo uh, where the guys are dancing with the different colors and so on, did you use um, rear curtain flash where the, where the shutter kind of closes at the end or where the flash is at the end, or did you use, um, uh, you know, front curtain, just the normal flash? No, this is just the normal flash. Um, I can just bring it up quickly again. Sorry uh there we go this is just normal flash um no rear curtain just front curtain flash but what i what i do is i i use the grid to concentrate that flash on the subject so that it doesn't spread out too much and then only what's in the middle of my frame is frozen so if the if i feel like there's too much um, my um grid is not giving me enough focus on the subject i'll even um, switch over to my snood um to give me even more directional light towards the middle over here because that's where i want everything to be um frozen whatever's happening over here in the middle wonderful nice so uh carla Ooh. tell us what you do when the when the smoke machine comes out um so I can share my screen with you quickly. Because we all know when the, when you light and the and the smoke comes out, it can present a problem. <laughs> yes. yes, it depends obviously on That's what. Oh, it depends soul. on what smoke machine your clients has gotten in. So, when I have my meetings with my clients, I usually ask them, "What are you bringing to your reception? Are you bringing cold sparkles? Are you bringing?" A normal fog machine do you have actually a company that brings in low-lying fog because if it's explain a, that a little bit Carla. so if you have it's like a normal fog. if you have a normal smoke machine and you try and put a flash behind your couple the smoke is just going to go up and everything's going to be white and smoky and foggy where you have the low-lying fog it works with dry ice so the fog actually stays on the ground and as the couple moves, it tends to go up a little bit, but it stays actually down. So when a couple brings in low line fog, I'll put the flash behind them and I'll have a flash in front and I'll basically just light my couple as is. As you can see, my ISO on that shot was quite high, but I'm very comfortable in shooting at a high ISO. Um, and then, yeah. That's basically what I do with my reception shots is I just put a light everywhere and I play. Great. And Luit? I do more or less the same, but um, normally when there's, um, you know, normal smoke machine and so on, then um, I've got a, I've taken one of my old, uh, one of my smaller stands and I've just taken the treat off. And then um, I will mount my, um, my flash. Uh, I've also got the V1, so I'll put the V1 on top. And then I'm tilted down uh, slightly, put the trigger on my camera, and then kind of walk around with the flash a lot higher. So <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's so uncomfortable, but I'm telling you, especially when things like um, retreat dances and stuff like that, you know, it, it, um, and if you then uh, kind of get uh, the camera a little bit higher up as well, then uh, you get all these, you know, these awesome kind of wide, well exposed shots. Mm. And um, and the light fall is so amazing when you do it like that, you know. So, but mm. but fog in, in general is um, I, I I love using it. Can we share the screen quickly? Please, yeah. Okay. So this is what, <laughs> this is more or less what I've done with with this one as well. This is also um, dry ice at the bottom, and then I've got Boy. the two 
set up behind the couple, so there's no diffusion all over the floor. So, and um, I've mm -hmm. kind of put it down, I think, to about 7.1 or so, or, or if, uh, if nine it might have been, I can't remember. Um, mm -hmm. Just to kind of get that sparkling effect, you know, so the, the starlight. Yeah. And then I had that, um, <laughs> I was walking around with my sticky thingy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the composition is amazing. Yeah, that's amazing, Louis. Thanks, man. That's Brilliant. Um, Moses, just also join us. Moses, just unmute yourself. Hey. Hey. Well, hey. Hi. Hey, Mr. So, hi, guys. Okay. Nice to have you with us. So, Moses, um, we're gonna we're gonna look at your uh, to your knowledge. So, um, in terms of, of uh, reception lighting, give us a, a, a quick little nugget that we can give to our clients in terms of lighting up the reception hall. Um, I would normally use um, the AD100. You know, it doesn't mount on a camera. So, I would, I would basically uh, bounce it up, but standing towards the side, um, uh, the sun the, standing uh, on the side uh, of the clients with the light, making sure that I, I, the light bounces from the side where I'm shooting from. Because if the if any light is is, is uh, bouncing from the other side, it means that there will, there will be darkness on the side of the clients. So basically, in the reception, I move around with the light that is um, uh, on my side, on the side of the camera, to make Do you sure have that it on the stand, Moses? faces. I'm having a. Do you have it on a stand next to you? The on the stand, and then sometimes with an assistant moving around with me, and then sometimes uh, it's just in my hand. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. Um, guys, I think, let's quickly have a look here. Um, guys, please, if there's, any, if there's any questions, please let us have it. Um, I know this is a problem. And then let's quickly um, talk about sparklers, sparklers, sparklers. Who's gonna take that one? The the, <laughs> the 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 sparkler shot on the dance floor or walking out stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so before you go on, if you go, if you don't mind, can I just share one thing? Of course. Um, let me go back here. I know everybody was talking about um, everybody was talking about try ice, um, but for all the photographers out there that are just starting out and you are thrown um, in the dark with, oh my goodness, what do I do? Um, I don't want everybody to be daunted by smoke. Um, so it can be your friend. Um, it's now in COVID when you can actually wear a mask over your face and protect yourself from it. Um, but for everybody out there, um, smoke can definitely be your friend and you can use it to your, your advantage as well. Um, this was just a normal... Um, I think a place at the back with a yeah. CTO gel. So the orange that you see is just from the gel. And then these light beams that are coming through here, it's just from people dancing. Um, so they are yeah, shooting in between. So I think um, with smoke, it's more that you're going to have to be creative um, and allow the smoke to work for you instead of working against you. Great. Great tip. And then um, while I'm on here, can I start with the sparklers? Oh, did I go off? And what do you, what do you, what, what's your thought process when sparklers come into play? What do you think about in terms of your exposure and settings and, and lighting? What is it that you need to, to make sure you do to, to get a good sparkler shot? Um, number one is I take, well, I place the backlight at the back, um, and that just gives a the client a beautiful room. So I asked Peter to, again, just take my LC500. It is a LED, um, and it's shining straight onto the client. Um, and he's my second, so he will be holding my, um, the, the LED for me, just concentrate because I'm the client. And I mainly focus on exposing for the client because if I expose for the client properly, um, a low shutter speed would be allowed for my sparklers to show. So I usually just expose for the client, um, make sure that they expose properly, and then I ask them to just go crazy. I ask them to run, um, go back and forth. 
spins and twirls, kisses as much as possible. Um, and of course, we advise clients to always have the and longer sparklers and not the short ones. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the longer ones. And for all the photographers out there, um, our go to is a little um, low torch lighters. Yeah. If you guys can invest in about a few, have them on hand. Those ones light those sparklers so quickly, you go down that line Super like a jet. So you ask four people, well, we have four of them, and then we ask four people, hey, would you mind just helping me out? Use two starting at the bottom, two starting at the top. You guys meet in the middle. Within a few seconds, minutes, you guys are all done. All the are left, the client's ready to run. So um, instead of having to wait for everybody to find a lighter or a bonfire or having to fish for something or to a light. candle from the venue. Or candle. Um, I think those low, those low torch lighters are the absolute best. Um, invest in a few and keep them on the go. Um, and then you yeah, just ask people to assist you guys. Two from the bottom, two from the top, meet in the middle and disappear. It's a great uh, tip that uh, Monique, because you're also adding value. You know, when, when a client see you're ready for that and you've made provision for that, you've already won the battle. So, yeah, that's a great yeah. tip. Yeah. Moza, anything to add? Moza? Um, I, with, with sparkles, I haven't um, worked with uh, those type of sparkles before. Um, only the ones that are in, that are indoors. In a, okay. in a reception venue. Yeah. All right. Lurt so and uh, Um, I, I have my screen share. Um, so Monique was talking about the small sparkles and the bigger sparkles. Um, obviously, yeah, like the, the bigger sparkles works the best. I just want to show the audience the difference between the bigger sparkles and the smaller sparkles. So this is smaller sparkles. You don't see them as prominently as you would a, a bigger sparkle. So yes that's a, a that's good advice to actually tell your client to get the bigger sparkles and actually invest in that because as you can see it doesn't show off as nicely as the bigger sparkles do yeah, yeah. just say that again Lord. No, the, the smaller ones burn out so quickly you know it's like um what we find with uh, with the sparkle shots is that uh, you get those really long ones and then yeah. uh, the mini would normally make, you know, make uh, two congas fires next to the side or whatever. And then uh, we will show everybody where to stand. And then everybody would like the, and everybody will be in position and, and, and ready. And then everybody would like their sparkles uh, at the same time and then just move to their positions and then we take the shot. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I, can I, can we share the, the screen again? Probably? Of course. This is a little bit different, but it's also oh, a that's nice. oh, 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 it's a small photo. I couldn't find the Irish one. But what we've done here is, is um, uh, we had somebody standing at the back with a steel wool in, a, in an egg whisk. Yes. And um, then you will light the steel wool. But you need to keep the. Uh, I don't have a tripod here, so I took one of my light stands and just slapped it on the, on the light stand. And then um, just before the end of the exposure, we would um, we would have to flash, just you know, just give a burst of light on a couple. And um, you would be amazed to see the different effects and, and, and all of that you, that you can get from this because you don't have to, to swirl it like this. You can swirl it like this. You can swirl it like that. You can even swirl it like two a couple and have the sparkles kind of you know come closer to the lens. And um, yes. As those sparkles kind of come closer, it's like they open up and they, they get bigger and all of that, you know. So and this is actually quite a it's a very it's a very fun thing to do at um, you know right at the end of the night and so on. Um, but you have to be sure that you're not close to trees and dry grass and stuff like that. And maybe have a little you know, a little canister that we use sometimes for the night shoots if there's no rain yeah. we will add rain on the umbrella and whatever. So we will always have that kind of handy when uh, whenever we do something like this. But the setup is, is more or less the same that what we would do with um, with uh, the, the normal sparkles where the people will make an entourage you know, and wait for, for a couple to walk through. You have to light at the back and then um, 
obviously I, I don't have a constant light, so I can still use a, a AD or the B1 on my stocking. <laughs> then uh, a couple will walk through and you know and you'll you'll get your shot. My ISO it's document documentary type what you've said it's a little bit early and so on. And the couples absolutely love that, you know. So um it's more about for for me, I think it's more about having them have fun than um you know, that produce that perfect low kind of ISO shot and whatever. You need to kind of capture that moment, you know. It's more about better capturing the moment than missing the shot. Yeah. <clears throat> um, question here, guys. Uh, I'm not a speed light shooter, so uh, I know you've got one, uh, Peter. Maybe you can take this one. Uh, Peter, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? There we go. Awesome. Um, I used to use the Z860 Mark II. And I just, I didn't think that there would be such a difference in the way the light spreads, but with the rounder lens and the, then I bought the V1, the light spreads way more equally and it's a much better look. It's softer, it's really, it does, it does have a difference compared to the square traditional shape. Yeah, um, just to add to what people say, I've got an example here. So this is a, uh, this is an AD200 <laughs> and this is a V1. So you can clearly see what a what a massive difference um in spread that would provide you from if you just had a square head um instead of a round head um like this and then of course with um, the re the main reason why we bought um, and invested in the v1 is simply because it allowed us to um do the quick modifier just with a little um just with magnets literally just slipping on instead of having to on my on my V860 yeah. or on my, yeah on my V860 or on my um, AD. AD200, you have to purchase this little adapter. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see go. it? The little adapter. You mount that on like that, <laughs> and then that will then allow you to use the same modifiers on your flashes. Oh, that's so, so clever. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Cool. Um, Gaurav thought they just uh, share something with us. I'm not sure how that's going to go down with the clients. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a clause, put a little clause in there. I <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got a question for you, Trompi. What do you feel? Yes. How do you feel about um, like venues that have absolutely nothing to bounce off? You know those glass venues. Oh yeah. No. How do you Guys, feel what yeah, I, 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 I go to the umbrellas and I just throw light out there. Okay. Um, again, I'm, I'm really not into if, uh, you know, if you look at my portfolio as well, my reception work is documentary style. Um, as, as long as I can have a good exposure and in focus clients, that is, that is my aim for reception work. With yeah. the dance shots, I'll maybe get a little bit funky, like Nick, <laughs> but uh, the rest. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to get that done. Um, guys, so is there any um, anything we want to share more about reception? Is there any thoughts? Because then after that, we'll move on to the, the night portraits. Any, any other nuggets that we can give our clients? No. Oh, um, just with regards to how to light um, or just being creative with fun things like the garter toss or the bouquet toss and how you can actually make it interesting. Um, if you share my screen, I can show you um, a shot of how to actually make it interesting. Can you see it? Yes, it's up. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, the first thing over here, there are uh, two light setup. Um, there's an LED facing the bride over here, which is the lady in red. And then there's an AD200 popping light onto the bouquet over here because that's where my main focus is. Um, and just to be creative, instead of just using or just capturing everything as it is, because you know, doing so many things a year as a photographer, you need to be excited for something as well and to experiment and to find new ways of doing things. 
in that you allow yourself to provide a better product for your client to be also be excited for at the end of the day. So um, creative lighting such as this, because it is allowing your eye to go directly to that lady, a very, very lucky lady. Hopefully she gets married soon. Um, that caught the bouquet. Um, so yeah, getting, getting, um, and then also what I wanted to focus on here is how you can um, use two different types of lighting, a flash that goes up there and then an LED that's shining on the client over here. The one thing I will, I learned tonight is I need to work a lot harder to keep up with you guys. <laughs> work that work with Nick and everyone and with Carla and Moza. I, I don't work hard enough for the reception. Uh, Moza, <laughs> have you got any reception uh, photos you want to share with us before we move on? Is there any photos you want to show us? Yes, uh, uh, Trumpy, I don't know if you have um, on my folder. I don't know if you can be able to access it. Uh, I can try. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, let's not have an empty uh, uh, chat some more, guys. I just want to bring this up quickly. Perfect. Look, Fatum, look, Fatum. So this, this Irish guy walks into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> No, Monique, you guys are a, a real inspiration for me, man. It's like, um, you know, you get to a point where uh, you've got your idols and all that, but um, I've, I've been following you guys, and, and yes, man, you've made a world, of, um, a world of difference for me. You know, it's like, um, uh, especially, I mean, I, I haven't really seen a lot of these um, reception shots, but yes, man, you guys are making a lot of effort. I'm, I, I have to start with Trophy in this one, you know, normally... By the it must be none. <laughs> Over and done for, you know, and then, then you know, you want to the stuff and whatever. But you guys are really inspiring, uh, you know, uh, with, with the nausea. <laughs> <laughs> I think we we all use you guys as a, I mean, as I'm speaking on behalf of Peter and I, I'm sure Kara can also jump on you. Um, but I mean, we all started somewhere, and I think if we haven't moved by now, then there's something wrong with us. If we don't continue improving every single day and, and and try and find inspiration from everything we see, how are we going to improve and provide a better product? Because at the, like I said, at the end of the day, when you look at the photograph, you're going to be spending the next month in the, ed editing these photos. So you better be excited to get them. You better make yeah. sure you're excited to get tackling. Because trust me, there's, there's sometimes I look at photos and I'm like, oh, I don't really want to. <laughs> Let me make it. Let me make it good. <laughs> Moza, I'm gonna quickly share some of your photos. You can just talk us through it. Can you see it, Moza? I've brought it up on the on the on the screen. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. Here I was. I was shooting this, and there was just a few people standing up and dancing. And I specifically focused on these two because every time there was a song, they would jump up and dance, jump up and dance. I said, no, I'm going to make sure that I document their moments there. <laughs> yeah, so they were the, it was a bridesmaid and, 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 a, yeah, and a groomsman. So what I was looking at here was the lighting at the back. I didn't want to miss the, the details of the, the fairy lights at the back. So I made sure that I can at least put my f-stop at a point where I can blare them a bit and not have them appearing just as they are. Um, they were blue. I, 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 I wish um, I, I wish to have had um, at least orange or something, but I I went with this and yeah, being blue as they are, I just felt like, okay, they, they, they are fine. They are sort of blending with um, the setup within that side. So my lighting, of course, was in front of the the two there if you can see at the back it's, it's a bit darker so my lighting was specifically uh directed towards them and this was a flash it was not a speed light um it was not um a small a smaller flash or a portable flash it was a 600 watts light so it was put in the direction where in the site where where, where they were standing uh because by the time i was using um 
flashes during reception. So I'll just move it to this side. At some point, move it to the other corner if I want to shoot the other people. Uh, let's say maybe run about three tables on the other corner. I'll just go and put it that side and focus on that table for that time. And then okay. move it again to the other side, focus on that table, whatever is happening on that side. Yeah. Let me just bring up your other one as well, Moza. And there. I really like that. Wonderful. Love it. Okay. Yeah, so here I was using the, the AD1200. Um, the AD1200? Oh, the AD <laughs> Where did you get an AD200, my man? I got it from The 1200 or the, or the 200? The 1200. Whoa. So, yeah, so with it, uh, Serious gun tower, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to play with it a lot of power. He wants the bomba. <laughs> Yeah, so I could uh, put from a distance, uh, maybe run, run about uh, maybe five meters away or so, or maybe six, I don't remember very well, in a very big space. So I was using a snoot um, like this one, um, which okay. I bought together with, with AD. So then the snoot comes with uh, some gels within it. You just open and then I think there's always this red gel there. Yeah. So this is the, the gel that I was using. And then it has a grid with it. And yeah, this grid sort of sort, sort of um, uh, 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 balances, the, softens the light a bit towards the subject. Although it's not a lot uh, of softening. Yeah. But then with it being red like that, I said, I'm going to point towards the two who are dancing there. Then I went straight towards only those two. It's not a big net. Uh, it was just directional light with the mm. with the snoot, and then focusing specifically on those two, and then darkening the whole environment um, on camera. So the shutter went a bit higher there, so that it can be dark in the room and still have those lights there at the top. So I was always looking at those lights and looking at that direction, how they are positioned, and trying to splatter them together with the um, the couple. And obviously the grid and the coupled with the snoot will allow you to focus the light only on them and not have it spill everywhere. So, yeah, that was great thinking. Great image. How the red is not blue. Mm. Right. Uh, let's move on to some uh, night portraits, guys. Um, Carla, is that something you do at the end of the evening? I do. Um, I love it. Let me bring you up. Um, but obviously, I work with artificial lighting throughout the day. So even if it's daytime, I'll create something dark because that's my style. Um, so nice. like, for instance, this was a very rainy day. It was pouring. Um, it was just before this photo was taken and it just came down. But here, I just decided to put them in a very dark area because the the lighting around them, the natural light around them was so moody that I thought, okay, let's just put a light behind them, a soft light on top of them, balance it out a bit, and you create something magical. Um, yeah, like whatever I do, I just, I play with lighting. And this was late, late afternoon, just before the sun set. You can actually see it there in the water. Um, it was already very dark, so I just put a light at the front, light at the back. Okay, the what, is your, what is your lighting setup? What is what is it that you use for, for these type of shots? Have you got specific lights um, that you use? No, so I saw you just my speed lights, no modifiers, um, just my speed lights, and obviously balancing it out with my settings in camera. Yeah, okay. beautiful. Uh, Moza, uh, we've just got a question there for you from Shandai. Okay, can you give us any tips on fixing skin tones orange with your lighting setup, please? <laughs> can you give us uh, any tips on fixing skin tones orange with your lighting setup? Please? Yeah, so so your um, image, the 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 um the color that you use there obviously is going to affect the skin tones. Do you what do you do afterwards to fix that if you have to? Uh, it was to adjust the hues and, 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 and saturation. Um, I, I didn't want the skin tones to 
to come uh, too much away from the color that I had uh, showered the, the carpool with. If it's 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 um is directed towards the the image that 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 I took in the reception and then with the red gel on, so I needed the the color to be like that, red as it was, because before before the image I shot an image which had uh, their skin tones normal as they were, and then while they were busy, you know, quickly changed the colors. I, I quickly loaded red onto the snooch and then started to create that image. So I was giving them sort of two options. Uh, within that dance as they were coming in. Okay. Carla, back to you. I want to see a few more of your images if we can. Okay, so I'll start with this one. Usually when I go to my couple session, this was, it was quite light outside. It was a little bit overcast, um, but the sun was coming around about here. Yeah, it was coming from here. It was late afternoon. There was lovely clouds. And I basically exposed for that because I wanted to get the clouds in my image. Um, I had a light at the back to obviously just create that beautiful room. And I had a light at the front, but I don't light them directly from the front. I have a second shooter standing around about here and they are actually just holding my flash here and it's actually bouncing light off here. So that's how I usually shoot my couple portraits is I have a flash at the back and then the flash here at the top of them. Um, I'm going to ask something. Yes. Uh, when, uh, let's go back to the previous image. Yes. Did you, did you have the flash? Where did you have the flash pointing at at the back? What, what was the distance more or less? It, was it pointed at their backs, at their middles, at their heads? What so your... the flash is basically around here, equal to here. And then if I can show you what I do with my flash, um, it's obviously not standing like this. I tilt it up slightly so that you catch their hair and you throw a nice equal rim all over them. And yeah, that's basically my setup. The same with these ones. I had a, yeah, I didn't use light at the front. I only used light at the back because there was a lot of natural light actually coming and lighting them in the front. Um, it was just because it was so overcast. There wasn't really sun for me to play with. I had to drastically like do something so that we can do a couple session because after that, it just came pouring down with rain. Um, initially, when you guys said that we have to have a round table, the one thing that I thought about talking about is rain. In the beginning, I was stressed out if it rains because I don't really know I didn't really know what to do and then I actually discovered lighting and I feel that you can create something so beautiful for your couple just by adding a little bit of light and exposing for the area that you're in absolutely 100% yeah that's beautiful yeah that's me okay we'll come <laughs> Carla, uh, Carla, this is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, Luet, you're up, my man. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I love it. Yes, that's a lucky shot. Oh, <laughs> it was boring, you know, and uh, <laughs> we didn't have wow. much of a shoot. So before we left, I said to the couple, listen, guys, we're, we're going to have to do something here, you know. <laughs> And we didn't, we didn't even Luet, we just struggling to hear a little bit. Okay. okay. Is it better now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, uh, it, it didn't look like rain that morning when we left. And then, um, so that's actually my, <laughs> my shoe through umbrella that they're standing under. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I said to the couple, you know, um, we're going to have to get a couple of shots in the rain, you know, and uh, it was right at the end of the night, so they agreed. And uh, the light setup was more or less the same. So um, obviously I, I, I didn't have a flash on the camera or in the front. 
Um, but what I did was is I um, I put my flash down. I think it was um, I can't remember. I think it was I can't even remember. It was a small flash. I can't remember which one though. But I pointed. I just pointed it up into the umbrella and then had the, the little bit of light spore coming down onto them. Um, also on my side. This one. I went um, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, same thing, you know, right at the end, this was around about 12 o'clock New Year's, and it just oh, wow. didn't stop raining that entire day. And uh, same light setup. So over here, um, I had a, uh, my stand was standing over here with, um, you know, with uh, the 180 200 in a plastic bag or, or wrapped in glass wrap or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the, I would have, I would have liked to have the flash a little bit further behind them, so it doesn't look like they're actually standing on a on the edge of a bit of of an afterrun of swimming. It was it was so wet that you know I just wanted to get the shot and and you know get out. And then um, this this is kind of nice for me. You know, it's like um, um, the struggle or, or the challenge here is um, I don't don't know where why that is, I think maybe my flash was a little bit too high. But when the flash is too high, you, you tend to get these kind of lines um, mm. on the water where they might kind of break away from the couple. So the trick then is, is to try to get them as, as centered in that uh, in that shadowy part as, as, as you possibly can. Um, if the light is a little bit lower, then you won't have, you won't have that. This one was uh, a wedding that we shot last year in uh, Belito. And um, it was right at the end of the of the couple shoot. The couple was already in the in the waves and all of that, so they were already wet. And I said to them, "Listen, but let's um, just go um, rinse yourself off in the pool." <laughs> and then um, the bride jumped in the pool. I, I I saw a pool noodle lying around, and we put it under a dress over there. And she started floating, but uh, it was it was tilted sideways. And then uh, when I got home, I thought, you know, I just want to see what it looks like when we tilt this thing upwards, you know. And it um, turned out to be like a very nice shot. It looks like the bride is levitating somewhere. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's awesome. It's um, awesome. It's, well, this is also a little bit lower. Oh. So the other ah. one. But what we've done here is also a one light setup, um, just uh, hiding behind the, the bride and the groom. And then we just sloshed them with, uh, with a bucket of water. <laughs> well, you've um, got adventurous clients. <laughs> this was also this was one light um, shooting up to uh, uh, into the umbrella as well. Um, so all the light spill that's that's on the couple is um, is, is 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 coming from the light, uh, the flash at the back. I actually put it right down there, um, you know, on the ground, so it was just facing up. But what was interesting on this shot for me is like it, the, the the raindrop seems like it's actually going upward. Look at that. Mm, quite cool. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just something so different. Absolutely love shooting in the rain. This one, um, we had a spray bottle and I had somebody standing behind the couple, also one light. And, um, you know, I just had him do this with the spray bottle behind them. <laughs> Over the shutter for for a little bit, and we ended up with that. Oh, that's so cool. Seen, uh, this is just uh, you know adding gels and, and different color casts and so on. This one was actually quite an interesting setup for me because um, we had two 80, uh, 80 set up at the back, one with the orange gel and one with the blue gel. And um, and the, the funny thing is, is I actually shot this in black and white. And when I got back home, um, you know. Uh, for, the wall poles tend to uh, revert back to, to color, you know, and I, I loved it. It's like, it's so different. It's you know? beautiful. It's awesome. This one was at, um, at Cosco, I think it was. Um, just a one light setup far behind the couple, you know, trying to get, but see the light is a little bit lower and there's no kind of lines crossing, um, crossing over the lake where they're standing. So we just got a perfect reflection and, and all of that. Um, I normally do this without any diffusion and so on. Um, I kind of like that crispy, crispy kind of blue, um, mm -hmm. blue light that comes off the flash. Um, you know when we when we do uh, when we go and shoot. This one was also just uh, you know a, 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 the couple got married at a venue not too far from a, from our house, 
And um, there was this uh, off-road track where uh, the kids were like riding around in the afternoon. And that night I said to the couple, listen, guys, I think we should go and try this tunnel thing, you know. <laughs> and we just had to stand in the, in the tunnel, one light in the back. And um, uh, I'm pretty really happy with that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Oh, this is actually just oh, one thing I want to say. Um, oh, this one, okay. you, you're not going to win any awards for this thing. But the reason why I've, I've put this one in is at the back, um, we, we seldom kind of tend to think to turn the flash around facing away from the couple because you want to get that room light. But um, often, you know, uh, you, you get a total kind of different look when you kind of uh, turn the flash around facing the other way. If there's mm -hmm. any behind them and, and i was kind of lucky here because that room light is actually bouncing off um bouncing off the tree behind them yes yeah so it's just a little bit of a different kind of look and feel and you know um just adding to the little bit i think i know ouch sorry it's gonna visit that oh <laughs> climbing up against my leg yeah so it's um you know uh, it, it's kind of nice to kind of just kind of face the flash away from a couple of, you know, at some point and then um, see what you end up with. And then this one uh, was at the same venue than that previous one we, uh, with the blue and the, and the red or the orange. Um, I just had the bright stand in front of the window. Um, I, I blew, I've, I've got it vape, so uh, if I want to create a little bit of smoke, then I'll, I'll just blow, blow a little bit of vape there and, um, and then just kind of disperse the light. Hey, yeah, okay, yeah, we're not. <laughs> and, um, I, I, had a, I had a shoot through umbrella with this one, and um, we're happy with what we got, you know. So, just a little bit first of light, and absolutely love this. I like to keep things simple, you know. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> point of <a> <laughs> Yeah, I like to be things simple, you know, if you, especially with a night shoot and so on, you don't want the couple to stand around waiting and so on. So, um, mm -hmm. try to keep it as, as simple and as effective as possible and uh, get it done for them so that they can move back to the reception and spend time with the guests. Thank you, Lloyd. That's amazing. Thanks, Toby. Um, so, what I wanted to just ask you guys before we move on to the next, um, do you guys... Uh, charge extra for the night shoot is that included in your in your packages as is yes no. yes <laughs> okay me and Luan just did on one side <laughs> no, 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 I think I'm, because the quality of work that i've seen yeah we, you guys need to really start uh, charging more for that uh, so for me my my top packages include a night shoot you know, only when they book 12 hours and up, uh, you know, um, so yeah. Moza, uh, I'm going to bring you in in a second. I've just got to find your images. Let's go to the Bosmans. Okay. okay. So I'll start off with a shot over here. Um, my main um, idea with night shooting, trying to show off what's around um, the couple instead of just showing off the couple. Um, and I think Luit and Carla does that quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show off the lights that come off the background. Um, you know, I, I wanted to show off the little kids standing over there at the top um, and then the couple enjoying at the same time at the bottom all by themselves. Um, so this is just a 8200 at the back with a CTO gel. And then again, from the front, I have a, um, a LC500 um, LED um, popping some light on the faces from the front um, to give them that 3D kind of look. Uh, let me go out here and I can start. This was, it looks like a light outside because I popped up the, the exposure. But yeah, this is kind of like just off to onto the side. It was a gloomy day. So I wanted to just take some pictures in the rain for the couple as well. Except this was actually not rain. This was droplets from the um, trees over here. So it went, oh. the rain had just passed. And I was like, okay, cool. You guys want to go outside? And they were like, yes. And I said, um, I looked at the couple and I said, 
um, hold your breath, one, two, three, and Peter just shook the tree. And then that's what happened. Um, again, just a 80 at the back, 8200 at the back, um, with no diffusion. That's just to be bold. Um, shooting directly at the couple. This is again just reception. This was um, a rainy day, but not as rainy as some other days that we've experienced. Um, we had nothing but this little um, four wall uh, corridor, not, not, not corridor, almost like foyer, a foyer yeah. area that we had to shoot this couple's, um, how can I say, couple portraits. Um, and this is just an 8200 shooting directly at them. But because it's so well lit inside and there's so many white walls, that beautiful AD um, casted a light from the front. So that's where the front light's coming from over there. I just closed the door to give them a little bit more direction um, for the eye to lead towards the couple in the middle. Um, this again, I've got a wider shot over here. So as you can see, I'm outside in the rain, the couple's on the inside. And again, this is just an AD 200 at the back. Um, and because there's a white wall, it then reflects off the white wall to give her a beautiful um, light from the front. And that's that one there as well. Um, this was after, yeah, this was also just before the reception. But of course, it was like super dark at this time already. Um, this is the AD bouncing off a wall um, to my right to give them a cost from the right, from a light from the right um, over here. Dancing, dancing, dancing. This was um, with night shooting on our side. We usually ask the couple if they would be interested in doing something like that. Um, because it's always for us, I don't want to break that flow. And once a client is having fun and dancing and, you know, enjoying time with the guests, I don't want to take them away um, unless they are giving, you know, gave, gave me uh, permission to do so prior. So um, this couple was super keen. Um, they given us permission and we, um, that's the reception at the back. Um, again, I wanted to just show off what's um, in the area, um, what's at the venue. There was a little bonfire going. Um, this is again, just an AD at the back with a, I think we had the M1 in the front, yes. um, not the LC. So this little, um, small little McGafty gave them quite a bit of light um, from the front. And that's just a closer, closer look on that one. Uh, that's reception, reception. This is the rainiest I think we've had um, ever in the six years that we've done photography. This is as much rain as what we've experienced. Um, we had a wonderful videographer that um, had that little umbrella and that's actually a see-through umbrella. So it's not reflective at all. But I don't know if you can just, just imagine this. So Peter is actually behind the camera. I mean, behind the couple. And he's holding his jacket over an 8200, um, crunched down on his like opsayerka, his opsayerka, and he's he's literally covered. His feet, his socks, his shoes, everything is in a puddle of water, oh. and he's being drenched with rain at the back there. Um, but I think this is one of the, I think one of my favorite, most favorite shots that I've ever taken. Um, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of encouragement for, uh, to, to convince the client that, you know, this is something that would actually look beautiful. Um, and the client actually loved it. So, um, big ups to the client. Love you guys. Uh, <laughs> that's another version of that. So again, um, explained earlier on there's a light at the back and that just bounces up uh, to reflect back on them to create a beautiful light on their faces um dancing um sparklers and i think i think that's it yeah brilliant 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 work did you um your white balance on that did you uh, did you how did you do your white balance on, on, uh, on those particular uh, shots, was it uh, was it manual? Was it on Kelvin? How did you guys? How do you guys normally? Oh. 
Oh, yeah. So my, um, funny enough, on my Sony, I actually put it under the best one for me is usually Calvin. But when I'm outdoors, I feel like there's, there's, a, there's a white balance icon thing in the jiggy on the Sony that's actually for underwater shooting. And that works perfectly for me because I love shooting a little bit more cooler. Um, and then in post, I will warm it up to my liking because the first thing that I go to is skin. Tone. I focus on skin tone and making sure that nobody looks too orange or too yellow or too red. Um, and that um, underwater yeah. white balance it looks like feature, it looks like a fish, um, mm -hmm. works absolutely perfect. But I did do research. I think it is anywhere from around 4,200 to 5,000 Kelvin. Cool. It's, it's, it's amazing. Thank you. Brilliant. Right. Let me just see where's Moza. Uh, let me just bring up the images, my man. Let me see where they are. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Here we go. You're on, okay. you're on, uh, Moza? Yes, uh, Trumpy. Okay, with uh, this image, I I took one of the groomsmen um, with a lady he was with uh, because I wanted to convince the couple that I want to shoot them an image at this area. So um, I took this image and I started to also uh, figure out how I can do the night shot, how I can frame it all together. Uh, for the couple, then I got this. I got some some pictures for the for the two of them. Then after that, I I, I went to the couple and said, you know what, I want to shoot you a picture at this area here before before we leave for the night. Um, so the next picture was the couple. Great. Let me just see. We've got another great one here from you. Hang on, it's loading. There we go. Stunning. Love it. You can see the stars. Yeah, so this is this is like the same area. I hope that's not your fence that I said dirty. I hope it's stars. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hope it's not your fence that I said dirty. Is it stars? Yeah, it's stars. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what, what I did here, I I I had an idea of uh having them uh, kissing under the stars and I couldn't do the the the, the astrology uh, astronomy shots uh, on camera, so I decided okay in post when I when I went to post I decided okay I'm gonna add a bit of stars in Photoshop so which is what I did there. Um, the image was without them, then I added them and I I loved the the lighting that was going uh, on the ground and the way it was uh, structuring all together. It's sort of uh, four lines. The other one is not as bright. Uh, I had to actually brighten it a bit in post. So, because the, when the light hits them from behind, there were those two poles on the left and right um, next to the couple. And they were sort of uh, causing the lighting uh, to go like that um, in front of the couple and also on the, on the other sides. So I, I just loved how the light uh, disperses around the area and then there's the couple being in the center and then and, and, and an idea of stars um about them great so moza did you use the ad 100 here here i use the ad 600. ad 600 okay yes let me just see if we've got something else here for you just one second there's another nice shot here i think oh i love these moza they're brilliant mm, very nice Explain uh, to us what you did there, and I'm glad you got the uh, Steve Maynard. <laughs> Steve Maynard. I should get paid for this, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so with this one, it was the night before the wedding, and um, we we were lodging the same uh, the same place as the couple. So they had everything in place, organized. They had the rings, they had the shoes together in one place for us to put. And we said, uh, why not save time and shoot them tonight? And then tomorrow, we just focus on other things. Um, then we took them and used uh, gel lights. We were using the 8200. Uh, 8, 
and I think the last speed light was the um, um, 685, something like that. Yes, yeah. The 685 uh, Gorok speed light as well. So we had uh, two lights. The other one we gelled it at the back to give that flare at the top right corner. And then on the table, because the table was a bit um, favoring us uh, in terms of water, we had to do some water splashes behind the shoes <laughs> to, to create those sparkles. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so here it was um, with blue blue gels and, 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 and orange gels. If you can look at the shoes, they are a bit bluish uh, in color. Well, I love that. It's brilliant. It's brilliantly done. Yeah. Very stylish. Uh, let me see what we've got here. Ring shot as well. And you use basically the same lighting here, eh, Moza? Yeah, it's the same lighting here. Um, I believe there's still a bit of blue visible there. Yes. And then we're using a, a macro uh, macro lens adapter uh, to to get closer to to get a closer. Uh, look of the rings if you see the line there this was shot at around f uh, maybe f 2.0 run about there okay and then the last one i have of you ah this is beautiful oh that's the end. On this. amazing yeah so it's the same the same concept on the shoes and then water dripping on top of the um, the cologne, if you can see there at the bottom of the bottle, there's just water splashing. So we just had to yeah, anticipate that shot and yeah, get it dropping like that. Fantastic. Thank you, Moza. Yeah, and I think one other thing was the, the sorry, the, the box. The box light was directed specifically to the box to have a different color from, from mm. the color on the, on the bottom. It is very well thought out. It, it makes such a difference, just those those contrasting colors. It's amazing. Those yeah. two things, yeah. Right, guys. So I'm just going to share something from me. Uh, now I've got to now I've got to come here with my average shots after all these great ones. <laughs> Where are we? Okay. Okay. Guys, so in terms of lighting, let me just, where am I in my life? Sorry, one second. Let me just bring it up. Okay. Right. Guys, in terms of the portrait lighting, the night portraits for me, um, I use two lights. Um, my backlight is always a uh, speed light, uh, so speed light, the 8200, uh, which is gel blue or orange, depending on what I need. Uh, obviously controlled by the, the the trigger on camera, so I can I can um, change the, the intensity of the light. And then for my front light, I use the Godox Ice Light. Um, the reason why I use as my key light. Uh, an LED is because it's quick and it's easy. So what you see is what you get. At the end of the night, I don't want to struggle with speed lights and getting the, the 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 power down enough, stuff like that. I want to make this quick and easy on the couple as well. Again, like Lou also said, they want to get back to parting. So um, um, you know that combination of a speed light at the back. Do you have enough power to light the background? And then uh, the LED, the, the Godox ice light to light the couple at the front. So obviously I've got my assistant there with uh, uh, the light on the stick, as you can see there. <laughs> <laughs> his, his stick just gets longer and longer because I keep having to edit him out. So <laughs> That's me normally. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> and again there, guys. Um, so I'm always looking for the night portraits. I'm looking to shoot through stuff and to light up the background. So even over here, um, I've got a uh, 8200 at the back, shooting through the, the the water, just lighting up that water, and then the ice light at the front to just light the couple. Um, let me just run through a few quickly. 
Yeah, that's average. There's another one there. Um, and then, yeah, it also makes it easier, guys, if the location is a little bit hard to work with. So over here, this guy's on the second floor. Okay, I've got to get him lit from this side. So, oh, with an, uh, you know, with a, a, an LED, I've got my assistant hanging from the third floor through a window <laughs> to light the group there. And obviously, inside, I've got the speed light of the 8200. I keep saying speed light, and I have speed light. <laughs> I light up the, the, the background behind him. Okay. So, I do believe that an LED is, is crucial for night for night type stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. It makes it so much easier. Uh, let me just see if there's something else. Uh, let me oh. use this one. So Please. over there as well, guys. Um, I've actually got the 8200 outside the church at the back, lighting up that blue window. And then you can see my assistant hanging out there again. <laughs> and then me struggling for two minutes to edit it out. <laughs> Uh, let me just see, and there's the finished picture. Let me just see where's that other one I wanted to show. And there's stuff like that as well, especially at night, guys. With what I find is what I like about the the night photography is that you can take a location that looks totally different in the day, and once you go at night and you put a light, you know, a backlight in there, it just transforms the entire scene. You know, so something like this, which is yeah, it's 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 got some columns there, but as soon as you light it up from the back, it just brings a different dimension to that specific location. And yes, that is from me. So, guys, anything else you would like to? Sh uh, first of all, um, the guys watching, is there any questions you may have? Let's. Uh, we're gonna give you guys five minutes while we wrap up. If there's any questions, please let us know. And then, yeah, let's let us wrap up. Is there anything else you guys would like to share? Lut? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I have to be honest. I think um, the uh, since since I switched over to Godox, you know, it made a lot of things so much easier. Uh, especially if you if you think about all the adapters, the trigger size, um, you know the just the, the the just the availability of everything, you know. I mean, it's there's like constant light, there's flashes, there's if you want to do high speed sync stuff, it's there, you know. If you want to do, um, you know, like the ice lights and and that fancy little magatha thingy that that these guys have, you know, I'm like I'm I'm, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. But it just <laughs> makes things so much easier for us, you know, just because everything communicates. Uh, with each other, you know, with, with ease, and it's not a trigger upon a trigger, and then you stack another trigger on top of it to make everything work together. Mm -hmm. And uh, the battery life on those things are just flipping amazing. You know, it's like um, I'll, I'll easily go with two or three weddings with my 8200s, easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you have to recharge them. So, I mean, I've, I've done a corporate shoot today, the entire day, everything, you know, the, the whole day, and um, they still fall, they don't even drop a bar. Nice. Yeah, and I think I think uh, what you're saying is important is that you're buying into an ecosystem. So you can go down from a, 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 a the, the the entry level speed light to a 1200 or a 600, and they all talk to each other. So it's a, it's a complete yeah. ecosystem, um, and you're never gonna have something that that can't talk to the other thing. And mm -hmm. having Godox in country where you can actually drive to them and say, listen, help me with this have a look at this you know it's 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 great yeah, yeah, yeah. changed my life totally you know so sorry yes sorry i just want to answer ilana yeah um ilana um i yes i always use gels it just depends on what color i wanted to look what look i'm going for it would either be blue or it would be orange Okay, let's wrap up, Moza. Let's uh, let's have you anything from you, Moza. Uh, I just saw somebody asked a question um, about the the water splash, uh, whether it was in Photoshop or it was natural. Uh, let me add and say it was it was a natural splash. Uh, there was an assistant uh, shooting together with me, and he was splashing water on the other side. So we kept on splashing until we get the shots that we needed. 
Okay, great. Awesome. And Moja, to close out, anything? Um, well, I'm I'm very inspired by every one of you. <laughs> Your styles being uh, different altogether and all amazing. Uh, it's very encouraging to see how much unlimited we are as photographers when we are in the wedding environment out there. You can tell that there's always something great that we can do um, in the wedding environment. I'm sure even the people that are watching today can see that there, there is something that they can produce from within them, from what they see with their eyes and, and produce it uh, um, and, and, and get to um, visualize it and create it in the camera. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very inspi inspiring thing to see today. Thank you, Moza. Um, just to answer that, you guys offer training for upcoming photographers. So um, please keep an eye on uh, the Godox uh, SA page because Godox has a lot of um, these type of sessions, even sessions in person uh, that is free to attend. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to Godox SA and keep an eye out for any of the upcoming training and uh, workshops that, that's there. And then also the photographers that's on here, um, I know most of us also do offer training. So go and have a look at the photographers that you've just seen um, uh, social media pages. And uh, I'm sure it will be up, up there um, what training they offer. Uh, Carla. Um, so I just want to close off by saying I love the Godox brand. Um, I've been shooting with the brand for four years. And I've never had the urgency to go back to another brand. Um, as Lurt said, everything works together. The whole community is so inspiring. The brand influencers and ambassadors are so helpful. Um, the whole team at Godox is so helpful. I mean, if something goes wrong with your equipment, you just pop it onto your nearest store, like a door photo, or you actually go there, and they can actually help you fix it. And yeah, they are just super helpful and the most amazing brand that I've ever seen. Thank you, Carla. And let's close with the boss month. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, the one thing that we could add is the fact that um, with photography and especially with wedding photography, with everything that happens so quickly and so fast and, you know, you, you can't, within a blink of an eye, the next thing that you need to run to. Um, Godox has really simplified everything for us to make it easy for us and convenient for us to just grab and go, whether it be an LED or whether it be a flash or interchanging in between modifiers. Um, it really does help um, with convenience. Um, and that's the one thing that we as photographers, and I'm sure every one of you can contest to this, is that we really need that backup with we can't be carrying around um, um like millions of gears every day or on a wedding day so the fact that it's just so convenient really does help um and adds to a lot uh, maybe you want to add something no i just wanted to add to that it's, we always try and keep our footprint as small as possible on a wedding day so we're not in the way and the godox system has just made it so easy for us to have our footprint so small that we not nobody nobody takes note of us, so we can capture moments that we not seen, and they that people can just act natural in those moments, especially in the kitchens. Yeah, just to add to that documentary style, we don't want to be seen, uh, but we want to see you smile, laugh, giggle, take a shot, whatever. We want we want to see you do it rather than us being seen. Um, so yeah, thanks, Godox. Love you guys. Guys, thank you for joining in. Uh, the influencers have done a lot of punting for Godox XA. They're probably uh, expecting some uh, discount. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, but thank you for you guys, uh, for our influencers tonight. It was brilliant. It's, it's inspiring for me as well. You know, I'm an old dog in this fight, and uh, it's been great to see you guys. Uh, thank you for the guys joining in and then thank you so much Godox for creating this platform for everyone to learn from and we'll see you at the next one. Have a good one guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.